Do we have a question from the brother at the back, non-Muslim brother? Yes, please go ahead. Good evening. My name is Lloyd Leslie. I'm from Tanzania. I'd like to thank you for this opportunity you've given me today. I have a simple question. I'd really like to know where does Islam stand in giving people second opportunities? Because I believe as all human beings, uh, we all make mistakes, but we tend to judge each other differently. If I break a glass or if I stab someone, it's okay, but it's different when someone commits adultery or kills. So how do you actually weigh sins? I just want to know that. How do you justify these things in Islam? Brother asked a very good question that what is the Islamic viewpoint on giving someone a second opportunity? If you read the Quran and the Hadith, Almighty God does not give you second opportunity, He gives you hundreds of opportunities. <laughs> hundreds. Allah says that never despair at the mercy of Allah. Never despair, never think that Allah will never forgive you. That's the reason every chapter of the glorious Quran, except for Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, begins with the beautiful formula, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful. You may have done maximum sins in the world, yet never think that Allah will not forgive you. As long as you repent. Now, in Islam, there are certain criteria for repentance. If you have done a sin, and if you repent, Allah will inshallah forgive you. To repent, there are some criteria. First, you agree what you're doing is wrong. Number two, stop it. Number three, that if you can reverse it, the act, you reverse it. Number four, never do it again. Agree it is wrong, stop it. Reverse it if you can, never do it again. For example, if you have robbed, agree it is wrong. Point number two, stop robbing. Point number three, if you can return the thing you have robbed, return it. Point number four, don't do it again. If you have done adultery, for example, agree it is wrong, stop it, ask for forgiveness, you can't undo it. Ask for forgiveness, don't do it again. What about capital punishment? How do you explain? Brother, that's a good question. How do you explain the capital punishment? If someone has done adultery, what is the capital punishment? In Islam, Capital punishment is there if there are four witnesses. In Islam, if someone does adultery, and if we have four witnesses, then the person who has done adultery is supposed to be put to death. For your information, let me tell you that in the life history of Prophet Muhammad and the Sahabas, there were only couple of people who were put to death, those who themselves wanted to be put to death. They themselves told the Prophet, I have done adultery. Prophet said, go away. Again the lady came. The Prophet said, when the child is born, come to me. The Prophet kept on evading, but she insisted. Then when she insisted, then the Prophet said, okay, stone her to death. And when she died, one of the Muslims cursed her. So the Prophet said, the forgiveness that she has asked for, even if you distribute in the whole city of Medina, yet it will be more. That means she wanted to be punished so that she will go to Jannah. There is not a single case in the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam where a person was put to death because of four witnesses. There were few cases, all of them volunteered to be killed. That means even today, even in Saudi Arabia, I don't know of any case where a person is put to death because of adultery, because of four witnesses. Unless the person himself or herself comes and tells, I have an adultery, put me to death. That means don't do adultery in public. It's a big sin. It's a major sin. It's the tenth major sin in Islam. But if you do adultery, it is between you and Allah. You ask for forgiveness. Don't do it again. Allah will forgive you. Again you do adultery. Again ask for forgiveness. And you repent. Allah will forgive you. The capital punishment only comes in the case where you do it publicly. And if there are four witnesses who give witness... That means don't spoil the society. If you are doing hidingly, it's a sin. Don't do it, but you are doing alone. So all the punishments have got certain clauses in Islam. And Allah says that even if you have done a sin as much as a mountain, ask for forgiveness, Allah will forgive you. So in Islam, Allah is the God who is most merciful, most gracious, most benevolent. 
Whatever sins you have, you ask for forgiveness, Allah will forgive you, you change your lifestyle, repent correctly, and inshallah you'll go to paradise. Hope that answers the question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Suppose if only Muslims are sent to heaven immediately after death, before judgment day, what will be the position of good non-Muslim souls such as Gandhi and Mother Teresa who are jihadists in their own rights for their own beliefs? Thank you.